We're testing the candy spinner thing. Offset inline candy spinner. First impressions. Wow, it levels out. It straightens itself out super quick, wow. This is good. Good bait. <laughs> I, I can't ask for anything better, okay. That's what I thought. I bent it out a little bit, like I pulled this up and it just stopped working. It was, uh, that throws it off really hard. Yeah, the closer the blade is to the body, the better it works. That's some hard one bait making info right there. You're welcome. I just let that stuff go free. I'm a bait maker's bait maker. I don't want to fish it anymore because I want to sell it. But I'm gonna... All right, see you back at the shop. Okay, last cast. Okay, very last cast. Gorgeous.
say it all the time. I just wish more people loved Sekiro as much as I love Sekiro. Oh, Sixteen millimeter. Took some off of that side. The hole was a little just barely off center. It actually doesn't matter if it's off center. A lot of people think that it does. But you can get more action out of a bait by having things lopsided a little bit. They kind of have to be lopsided, but then evened out. And you can always adjust the line tie on the front to compensate for anything if it's too much. Bait making is very forgiving. That shipping label stuff that I use to mark the gills out leaves a sticky residue that needs to be scraped off. That's slightly annoying. But I like how symmetrical you can get those gills with that stuff. They're just perfect. Let's put lead in this. Lead's hot. That's perfect. That was like first try. First try, no adjustments. It even sticks out like a couple millimeter, compensating for the clear coat, not running into the details I carved. Spiffy.
Graffiti Gill. Time to test this one too. I love just little nuggets of a bait like that. They feel so fish catchy. Testing, testing. Back at it here. It's quite a bit more water. I highly doubt any fish made their way up here. That'd be pretty dope though. All right. Line tie off the lip on a big chunky body like that. See what it does. It's definitely pulling. It's pulling and thumping. Oh, that's a crazy action. Good afternoon, wow. Action city achieved. Whoa. Wow, flappy is the first word that comes to mind. <laughs> Flappy. Unbelievably flappy. It pivots at the eyeballs and the tail just does a full 90 degree churn each direction. It dives less because of that too. Could you ask for a better action than that? I don't think so. Like there's no part of this bait that you don't see from one side. It moves so much, if that makes sense. All right, let's back it up. I wanna sell this. I mean, I don't wanna sell this, but I'm gonna sell this. Bittersweet feeling. Onto the anal thin lip swim bait. Need to put scales on it. Detail smoke black. Fastback green. I kind of want to keep it on that pink that was on this bait, just under the lateral line. Okay, that's a bunch of pearl white. And this, what should I do? And in that is gonna go some raw umber. Okay. All right, that was a crumb. We don't want that. Where does a man's tweezers go? I don't know. Using my pliers. We're gonna reduce this just a bit. No! <laughs> so many crumbs. And some balancing clear always helps stuff shoot. That makes for a very questionable color. Is that gray, green? Is there brown in there? Is there tan in there? I don't know. Raw umber and plural white. I made too much. I'm, I'm backing up pretty far and I'm just gonna come in at this angle but spray the whole thing. I think I'm trying to do something between a chub and a small mouth. More small mouth. Just a little bit of dark on the top goes a long way with scales. Okay, let's do a scale reveal. That's pretty classy. That's beautiful. Sorry, that just kind of fell out of there.
The girls need just one more thing. Just a tiny touch of lavender. Detail smoke black for the spines. It's kind of spine-like. That'll do. Silver on the tips. That's all I'm gonna do. They're gonna be pretty translucent and not very colorful. So sticking with the, just a hint of pink stuff. Like in the body, down the lateral line, you can kind of see that, just a hint of pink stuff. That's the dead meat custom eye we're putting on this. Like a white dead hint of pink stuff around the outside eye. That is nice. What a bright eyeball. I'm gonna have to put some violet highlight in the clear coat as well. This is actually gonna be a brown trout. That is what I've decided for it. Gray, now a couple drops of opaque white. That was three, oops, should be fine. It's fine. Silver, reducer, quite a bit of reducer. Balance and clear. I want a shiny light gray. And this is gonna go on in sort of like bars. Very sort of like bars. Big bars, thick bars. What am I saying? That's what I was visualizing while I was saying whatever it was I was saying. <laughs> so yeah, brown trout don't have bars, but I think this will complement what I want to do with the dots. And it'll be covered up a lot, so not your average start to a brown trout, but that's what I did. <laughs> Raw sienna, very much a brown trout color on the bottom. Flank, not the belly. Is it on the belly? No, the belly's white. Had to look at a picture. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom flank, but I'm gonna stay away from those bars as much as I can. Maybe leave some white in between. It's in the gills a little bit too. pretty intense. Given their name, you would think that these things have brown on them. Don't be fooled. Usually I just do a little bit of sapia on the top, which is like barely brown. That just ends up being a decent backing for the gold scales. Clear coat. I was gonna add some sparklies, but I need to do that after I clear coat the jointed anal fin lip swim bait, because I don't want sparkly stuff in the top clear coat of that bait. Laser silver. I put some in there for the tail. Straight up eyelash in the clear coat. I'm looking at it too close. I'm excited for this bait. Put a very thin clear coat on it. Preserve the carvings. So 
that blue dot. How dare that be there? Oh my goodness. Gonna have to watch that drip. You don't want globules. You wanna kinda clean it off as it drips. Right on, I think that's the end of this video. I'm still carving scales. It's just never ending. I said I'd save you guys the monotony, but I guess I showed a little bit in this video. Seriously, out of everything I'm doing right now, that brown trout is the most exciting thing to me. I know the paint's gonna be jaw-dropping on that. I'm gonna dream about it tonight. It's all I want to do right now, is work on that bait, but. We'll test the anal fin lip swim bait in the next video. That'll be ready. Finish painting the brown trout. And hopefully that never ending paradox of scales over there is ready to be molded. Probably not, probably two videos from now it'll be ready. But... I've been shaking these probably like a dozen times a day, trying to get them ready for when I do mold that production swim bait. Let's just call this the production swim bait. That'll probably be the name of it. Production swim bait. That's not a bad name. Like it produces fish, production swim bait, it's kinda cool. But there's a ton of floating glass microspheres already in these containers, and you wanna keep those from caking, floating to the top and just becoming a crust. Anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to all that in the next videos to come. Video's over. On to the next bait. No! Sorry, that just kinda fell out of there. That's slightly annoying. Okay. On to the anal thin lip. Flappy. I'm a bait maker's bait maker.